Dave here, how are you? And I'm hoping I'm gonna get the date right today. I think it's the 23rd of September, 2018. Now, I got it right this time because it was my wedding anniversary during the week. And uh, uh, hello to my girl. She'll probably be watching a little bit later on today. We don't share the internet at the same time while we're sending this out, otherwise it would cripple the stream. Anyway, I hope everyone is well. Uh, let me have a quick look here. I think it's all running fine because I've got people saying good morning, sound and sight. Good here, Dave. Good morning. Thanks, Ian. Well, wow, there's some chat there. You guys are getting in early. There was some, a couple of people were in half an hour ago. I can't believe it. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, we're going to do a couple of things today. We're going to have a little bit of a look at the Carbotech 13-inch uh, helical, or not. It's not a helical head joint uh, thicknesser. This guy is actually a segmented head machine. So it's got 26 blades around the head and there might be four or five of them on any given part of the drum. You, let's call it that way. There's six faces to the drum. So it's nibbling away, not just massive chop, chop, chop with straight blades across. And I'm going to go through that machine a little bit later on and we're going to run some stuff through and I'm going to address three different ways to eliminate snipe. And this is because Derek has asked me to do this. As handsome as ever, and happy anniversary. Thank you very much. 39 years, can you believe it? The same girl. We're tragic. It's not, it's not a popular thing these days to stay married, is it? I don't know, maybe it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know, that, that's a topic for you guys to have a chat about. Morning, Erdl. Uh, okay, so what else have we got? Snipe, how to avoid it, we're gonna cover that. We're going to start assembling the first real kind of prototype that's come off out of, 18 millimeter MDF of the Stanton bench and you might see I've got some more of it hanging up behind the, the thickness planer and we're going to utilize a whole heap of things here it's going to be fun uh, Rob happy anniversary uh, uh, Rife we just celebrated 50th you know why in Australia it's spring and everyone likes to get married with all the flowers and the new season you know it's just one of those things uh, excellent 49th for you Stuart uh, and thank you very much for all the happy anniversaries. <laughs> That's terrific. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, CNC quick assembly. Now, this the CNC machine has been fantastic. It's it's a learning experience for me as well because uh, sometimes I've told it to do things in the wrong series of commands, and it's not done what I thought it was going to do, and it's gone barreling off to one end and started burying itself <laughs> into the bed. And uh, I've written, I've written, I have written a list of priority now. So don't just get up and CNC machine and think, yeah, it's easy because it's, you have to, I don't know, it reminds me of Dar David Carradine, you know, in Kung Fu, he's got to become one with everything that's happening. You know, it's the same with the CNC. I have to become one. <laughs> anyway, uh, what else we got? Oh, Poor old John Lafferty. You know, last week I said he was going in for surgery for his kidney. It's the last one he's got. You only, you only get two per customer. Well, he's had it uh, reduced in size and they've trimmed the nerve, all that kind of stuff. And he's having a hell of a time in recovery. He's not going very well at all. So if you've got any well wishes for him, he would love to hear it. If you, as I said last week, if you're the kind of person that believes in prayer, man, oh man, you better start piling him on because he's got double trouble. His wife, Julia, is in the same hospital now with appendicitis. Can you believe that? I asked John this morning, have you run over the... No, I better not say that. He said he's ordered a whole heap of black cats with, that walk under ladders, and that might have been the problem. You've got to feel sorry for people. I, I just, that's terrible. Now, here I am. I'm having a great time in the shed. Poor old John is suffering so much with the pain, it's hard for him to even, you know, focus on... On typing correctly but you should see some of the messages I'll play them back well actually I'll I'll find some of them and I'll put them up here further on down the track after he's recovered I don't want to don't want to wind him up too much okay let me have a look here um, very few and uh, yeah th this is the amount of marriages that last a long time exactly right Carl uh, loves more wonderful the second time round, is it David uh, hello from USA chip uh, Craig uh, said first uh, Michael Jones, Jamison morning Dave from sunny Grafton can't stay we'll watch later raise garden beds to build cheers all oh great work 
Um, Paul, yeah. Oh. I'll tell you what. Poor old John. <laughs> I just... My life is cruisy. I have the best life. I just cruise for life. I don't get sick. Um, I, I do something and it tends to just stay done. I haven't got to go and redo it. Uh, I put a lot of work in hard when I was younger and I'm getting the benefits now. I guess you could say it that way. So Vicky and I, we great life. All right, what's the next thing? Chat, we're going to do Patreon. Check out the rewards I'm offering behind this. Oh, and the people who are my Patreons. I've said that I'd read their name out once a month. Um, these are for a certain tier in the Patreon site. Chris Sullivan, Roger DeBolt, Johannes Moa, John Wilson, John Para, Vincent Niang, Andrew Haverliv, and John Lafferty. Thank you so much. As I say, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't do this show because it's my Sunday gone. Uh, I've got to buy gear for it. I've got to set up demos. Uh, you know, I would still possibly be here in the shed, but why would I bother doing it when I could just have the radio blaring? I can't have the radio on while I'm doing the show because it's got copyrighted music. You know, YouTube would be on to me. All of these things around the edge. So thank you very much to all those patrons. And if you want to help me out as well, that's the end of the ad. Just down below, you'll see there's a link. All right, let's get stuck into this machine first. Now, believe it or not, this is my third of this model that I have owned. Now, you might wonder why. The first one I had was a gray and silver model. It's the same machine. It's just got a different paint job and a new logo on it because carbotex has got this fancy new spaceship style futuristic brand, which is fine. That's what they want to do. Now, uh, the machine, is, as I mentioned before, has got 26 individual knives around the drum. They all face forward. They're not tipped over at an angle. So because they're facing forwards, they can be flat. If they're tipped over at an angle, you can't have them. See my knuckles there? You can't have them like that. It'll create a sawtooth effect. So what they do for the helical heads is they round all the teeth and when they're tipped over like sideways, it's kind of a corrugated effect that you get. Now, I noticed there were some comments earlier regarding the DeWalt machine. Now, the DeWalt machine is a fine machine. It has three blades, I think, around the drum, and they're all full 13 inch wide. And you can set it to two speeds. You can set it to four meters a minute and eight meters a minute, I think. So you can slow it down if you don't want the, those little lines coming across, which is great. But if you hit a nail, you're stuffed. You've got to change the blades or you've got to get them sharpened. So if you've got a spare blade lying around, that's great. If not, you, you down, down tools and that's it for the moment. This one, if I nick anything, each blade has got two sharp edges. Now it's a square. So you've got this square and two of them have uh, two edges of the square or two sides of the square. One on one corner has a dot. Now I'm going to do, I'm doing a review on this machine because I know the machine backwards. The dot says I'm sharp either side. The adjacent sides are actually blunt because they push back against the head. So that gives it its strength. So you're not relying on the screw to hold it in totally. It's holding, held down by the screw and also by the, um, the, the ridges on the head. This does eight meters a minute and it's got two power feeds a power feed roller in front of the cutters and a power feed roller at the back to pull the timber through now hence this is where we get snipe as you're pushing timber into a thickness it doesn't matter whose brand it is as you're pushing it in the roller will grab a hold and will of the timber and might bump it bump it down like that as it's getting a hold of it and then you'll get It'll jump back up again in the reaction before it gets level and it will push up into the blades. So you might get a little bit of entry snipe, but snipe is most common on the exit. So the timber is going through the machine and it's come past the front roller. So it hasn't got any downwards pressure anymore from that front roller. It's only got the back roller pulling it and that's got a whole lot of downwards pressure. And then all the timber is hanging out the back behind the machine. And so that weight is wanting to do this. Before it was held by the front roller and the back roller and the cutters in the center 
as it comes past the front roller, there's no, no pressure to hold it down. And this happens. You get snipe. So the last two inches is normally where the snipe happens. Now there's three ways you can combat that. The first way is the easiest, and that's where you say, I don't really care. I'm going to cut those pieces off. Gone. So you lose four inches out of your timber straight away. Now, timber's getting expensive, so I don't recommend that. The second way which you can do is as you're pushing timber through the machine, throw in a couple of sacrificial pieces as well. So they're just going to tail along the same thickness always. So you push your timber through. As it's going through and it's getting near the end, you put those other pieces of timber in to follow it. And what happens there is that it holds everything steady. So you've got an overlap. There's no chance for the timber to drop up and for the, the rollers to have less effect because the rollers are still getting the consistent amount of pressure down because they're being held up. So that's one other way. Now the way I like to do it, and that's around the back here, is when I first set the machine up, you'll notice under the outfeed table, now this will be on anyone's machine, there's going to be a couple of adjustment screws down here. Now there's a, it's like a bolt and it's got a lock nut on it. And that is what the table rests on. So on either side, I unlock that lock nut and then I undo the bolt ever so slightly. Now the reason being, I want to lift this table up just a bit. Now I'm exaggerating big time here. I only want to lift it up about one or two millimeters. So that's putting a bit of back pressure on the timber as it's coming through and you're fine say goodbye to snipe it's so it's that easy now if you do it too much like london bridge opening up you're going to kill the machine and no one's going to give you warranty on it so do it ever so slightly get a straight edge i put my veritas straight edge through here and i made sure that i was just up around about two mil i had about about a two millimeter gap back here i could see two millimeters of daylight under the straight edge and it works perfectly now you'll probably want to see it happen while I've got the machine around this way, I'll show you a couple of other things. It's got a bung here. This is the dust uh, collection shroud. So it's a two and a half inch connection or a four inch, whichever one you're not using, this bung is shaped so I can put it in whichever one I'm not using. So I'm gonna use the four inch dust collection. And uh, let me have a look. I think you pay equivalent direct price through Zona's of add freight. Um, Okay, yes, it, talking about um, spiral heads for DeWalt. Now, I'm going to tell you something now. This is not an ad. I'm letting you guys know because this is the machine that I bought. And I said, this is the third one I bought. First one I owned, I loved it. I had a customer come into the shop once. This is when I was, you know, four years ago, three or four years ago. And he must, he, he was going to Ballarat the next morning and he wanted to have one of these machines. We didn't have any in stock. I said to him, I'll sell you mine second hand if you wish, just to get you out of a bind. And he was over the moon. I met him the next morning. He bought mine. Off he went. Now, I bought another one to replace it. So Carbotech weren't out of sale. That's fine. So he makes toys and he uses it all the time. And I saw him about a year ago and I asked him how the machine was going. He says, great. Never look back. So that was the first one. And the second one, as I said, I bought to replace. Then I sold it when I bought the big 15-inch floor model that I had. And then the 15 inch was great, but it was taking up a lot of space in the workshop and it wasn't very good for smaller pieces of timber. I found that this machine handled, say around 12 inch lengths, 300 millimeters without a problem. And it just didn't feel as, yeah, I, I, I think this was better for what I'm doing. Now I've got the CNC machine. I don't need to have that larger capacity. I can. I can mill something that's four feet wide now with that thing if I want to. Uh, so hence, I bought the smaller guy, this one, to replace the big fellow when I got rid of the big fellow. And this is great. I like it. It's the new color. You know, it blends in with blue. I like blue. You know that. Um, so how about we give it a try? I'm going to spin it around. I've got it sitting on top of this roll around cabinet. I've yet to bolt it down to it. We'll see. And I try and make the outfeed very close to the same height as my bench in the workshop. So as timber's coming out, 
I don't have to worry about being around the back to tail it out if I'm running multiples of timber through. Do you understand? Okay. All right. Now, let me see. I'm going to plug the dust port on. So this is just running the four inch system. And it's very easy to do. I've got it. And the lead is there somewhere, David. There it is. Now, the good thing about the dust chute on this as well is that it goes out the side. It doesn't go straight out that way. Because if... I'll explain what I mean. If it was coming, the dust chute was here, they normally fall down and get in the way. And as the timber's coming through, they will end up cutting through the plastic flexible hoses. So I like these. It goes out of the way. Totally good. Oh, and also, if you don't put the dust chute on, if you leave this off and take it outside, there is a fair competition between this and the DeWalt as to how far the chips are going to go. This thing is fan assisted. It blows the chips like you would not believe. I was saying to someone when I was uh, and I had, had my construction company and the apprentice, I'd set, I had a DeWalt as well. I set the DeWalt up on the back of the ute and I'd send timber in from one side and the apprentice would be on the other side tailing it out. <laughs> You've heard of man glitter, man glitter, say no more. All right, I'll plug this in. And I'm gonna run a few different types of timber through because it's always nice to get a comparison. You may understand that, um, who's late? Chris, off to the corner. <laughs> okay, you may understand that some softwoods fall away from a chisel. You know, if you're trying to chisel uh, a bit of cedar, for instance, as you're trying to, hardwoods are so much easier to, to chisel away because they're, they support the, the grain a whole lot better where softwoods tend to just push down and collapse under it. So I'm going to run a piece of Syrian cedar. This is Syrian red cedar and I'm going to show you here the tear out on it. Now that is from my big machine. Can you see that? So I'm going to do something that's uh, probably not really heard of. I'm going to push it through one way then I'm going to turn it around and push it the other way. And you will see how good it is. That's with the grain and against the grain. Now, I'm very, very impressed and very uh, confident that this will go well. Let me have a look. Got a shock. I saw Dave in a black shirt in the very old video. That's right. The weight, 38 kilos. My weight or the machines? I'm about 85. Too heavy. I've got to get down to below 80. Anyway. I keep telling people, I'm not a big fellow. I'm only a little guy. Now, I've got that there. One of the other things about this machine, I can show you as I'm setting it up, is, see at the front here, it's got a little indicator. It tells me how much I'm going to take off in any pass. It's in metric and imperial. This machine will do up to three millimeters in a pass, but I would not advise you to do that. It'll do it but it's not going to last as long as if you take off one millimeter or half a millimeter. When I'm doing a full width cut with some jarrah, and I've got some jarrah and I've got some rosewood there, we'll put through it as well, you find that uh, I take half a millimeter and that's all I'll do because why, why if this is not the big floor model, this is a benchtop machine. Benchtop machines are limited as to what they can handle. So it's, it's strong, it's an 1800 watt, just like the DeWalt. People are comparing the DeWalt all the time. They say the DeWalt's the one to get. Well, you know, it's nice. This is better. All right. So I'm going to lower it. And this has got a locking head as well. It's got four pillars and two screws either side. So it locks in position. Okay. Now the thickness of this timber, I can just throw the timber up on the top here and have a look because there's a ruler up the top here and that's 20 millimeters. Convenient as well. If I haven't got if I haven't got a DeWalt tape on me, <laughs> I can measure up the top here. It's so easy. So 20 millimeters. Let's wind it down here. And it's sitting on top of this. So it's going to rock around a little bit. Handle on the side. Nothing up the top here to get caught. And we're on 20 millimeters there. 
And watch this. When I feed it into the corner there, you'll see that I can adjust the height now. That's half a millimeter. I don't, you may not be able to see it from there. But that's going to be a hard call seeing we're not on full HD. Okay. Now, lock the head. And again, I'll spin around a little bit more so you can see. There's the head lock here. Gone. Around this way. And one of the important things as well to remember when you're using a thickness planer, make sure there's enough room out behind you for the timber to go to. Nothing worse than starting her up and all of a sudden the wood's starting to smash into a wall and then it starts to push the machine towards you and off the bench. Or what happened in my case, I started it up and one of my cameras got pushed off and smashed itself on the floor during a video. And I had a lot of people who were very, very generous. <laughs> and I had a little camera fund and I bought a new camera and that's terrific. Okay, I'm gonna do another quick read. Um, Stuart, the black, okay, uh, Lost Wits, black, blue shirt, yes, prices, okay, pine is a soft timber that I use because I love, love it, so what will be the outcome? Well, I'm going to run some pine through here as well. Uh, hey, love the DeWalt tape measure, Dave, I don't have one. Well, you better go and buy one. I haven't been given any more by DeWalt. I'll have to ask him if they've got some lying around. Uh, well, Sue, I'm guessing there is another one, but it won't be the Carbotech machine. These machines are branded. Now, Carbotech doesn't make this. Carbotech buys these. They find the ones that they like the best, and they, they get this branded their brand. It's a great machine. So for people in Australia, this, this is the one to get. You might find a similar one overseas, but I'll tell you what, I think they do have some things done in here to spec for the Carbotech. So even though they look the same, they may be, they, the Carbotech, as I say, buy an awful lot of them and resell them. They're a retailer and they would spec it up to what they want. And they're doing a great job of it. I need, I need, I need my earmuffs. Where are, where are, where are they? Oh, so one thing I didn't get first before I... Hold on, mate. there they are. Found them. Don't panic. Now, this is going to demonstrate two things. This is going to... Eye muffs. Thank you, George. This is going to demonstrate two things. Uh, yeah, don't let it smash into the stuff next door. This is going to demonstrate no snipe, and it's all going to, also going to demonstrate how good the knives are at getting rid of any tear-out there is no tear out. You better perform. <laughs> now that I've said that, it better do it, hadn't it? Okay. I'm ups on, and I'll turn on my Dusty. That's all, pull That's all pulling through nicely there. And I'm going to try and not talk louder. I have this habit of talking louder when I've got the earmuffs on. So I'm going to try, just try and keep it normal. It will make a bit of a noise. So you may want to turn your volume down now a little bit. All good? Excellent, here we go. I fed this side in first. Bring it up close so you can see it. And this is the side that had all of the tear out. And can you see any snipe? That's the end where it came out. I see no snipe. And this is where I fed it in. I also see no snipe. Let's go to the other end. Hello, 
us finding other things to look at. There we go. So there you go. That's fed in one direction. I'm going to turn it around and go the other way. Let's have a look. Okay, so there's some advice to, for people overseas to have a look at other ones. Uh, yeah, you used to get told I talk quieter when you wore earmuffs. Did you last wits? Okay, Carl, Subi, I have both a QTEC planer and a joint. I love them, good quality, very, very affordable. I have an Azito I've had for 10 years, still good, but not as flash. See, the other good thing about these is that you don't use a setting jig to change the blades. It's a machined head. You undo the knife, there's a hole through the center of the knife and there's a screw down the middle of it. Undo it, give it a clean, clean the thing and rotate it 90 degrees, screw it back in. You're good to go. It's, it's planing again. That's one of the things my DeWalt that I had, had three straight blades and as soon as I got a nick in one, you know, I was getting these little lines all the time in, in spots on the timber and it was ticking me off. That's why I love this thing. You know, there is none of that anymore. It's all gone. Uh, camera in it while you're running, just to let you know. Yeah, okay, thank you, constructive criticism. Um, Burl and similar types with this. Yes, you can, but look, planing end grain is never a good idea in a machine like this. It's normally best to use a, a drum sander. Um, sorry, join late. What cutting head is in the, in, in the karate? <laughs> it's a Carbotech, Gary. Um, also find the timing lifting the timber slightly as it's nearly finished yeah it does as well it does as well okay now I had fed it in I've got this mark here so that's I knew which end it has gone in so we're going to do it again with the other end and I'm going to lower it down um, one sixteenth of a turn it's all right you don't need to take truckloads off put the muffs back on again putting it in the other way. There you go. What do you reckon? You can't beat that. Wayne, you can get it online, buddy. Wayne's just brought up an interesting point there. I'm going to tell you a couple of things about this machine. Now, as I've owned this machine, I've had this one for about two months and I've only just pulled it out of the box. There's another fellow out there that I've been having a ball with, the CNC machine. So this guy has been sitting in the background. So I've brought it out. I've filmed a video on it yesterday. I am still editing it. Now, one of the things is, it was a bit of a coincidence. Carbotech have got a sale running on this thing. And please don't see this the wrong way. It's, it was a four-day flash sale. I only found out about it on Monday. So it's, it is for sale at the moment via the web. Now, if you were to walk into the Auburn store tomorrow and ask me if I could do it at the sale price, I'd say yes. So, you know, it's, it, I was just a little bit hesitant about telling you guys about it because it, it could be taken the wrong way. It's not meant to be, this was never meant to line up with a sale. It just happened to be, I've got a few things I've got to do some videos on. This guy here. The uh, CT26 around the corner there, I want to do a review on that as well with the new hose, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've, I get a backlog, and as I say, my brain has been full with the, uh, with the CNC machine, and I haven't, I've been loving it. Okay, so, yep, uh, I think the DeWalt is 1199 This guy at the moment is around 700 and something. So, you know... Your call, whatever you want to do. If you want to jump on the sale, otherwise it's eight ninety nine normally. So it's uh, nine, ten, 
11, yeah, it's a couple hundred bucks. Two or three hundred dollars cheaper than DeWalt. Um, okay, okay, now that's not to take away from the DeWalt. DeWalt's a strong machine. Uh, now, how about we put some hardwood through it? So you've seen how it works with very soft timber. Oh, someone asked for pine. Let's do pine. What have I got? This is a little bit of radiata. Some clear radiata pine that I've got. Let's do that. Yeah, you're looking at, uh, in the States, you've got to compare apples with apples. The American dollar is a whole lot better than the Australian dollar. I think it's about a dollar 35 or something at the moment, which is just huge. Um, and also GST, all that kind of stuff. All right, so let's put this through. Again, I just take it to the front and lower it down until I touch it. Something to be aware of as well, guys, just here, just either side of where that little arrow is, there's a whole heap of anti-kickback poles. There's little teeth hang down or little um, grabbers. So nothing can get kicked back at you. It's, it'll get smashed around inside the machine. Like if you hit a knot and it comes loose and starts wanting to fly out, you're pretty safe. Those things there. But the, thing, the downside of them is if you push a whole piece of timber in there, like full width, like that piece of jar I'm going to do in a minute, and try and get the, the reading for the height, the machine's going to grab a hold of it. You're not going to pull it out. You're going to have to raise the head again to get it out. And then so the whole thing's a um, waste of time. So put it in at a bit of an angle and just the point will go in there and you'll be good. Okay. What are we going to take off? That much. Lock the head and turn the dusty on again. Bit of pine. It's looking for all sorts of things to focus on. Bring it right up close. That's pretty nice. Okay, I'm just having a quick read. Um, different cutting blades, I'm just confused and we'll 24, 26, 26 different cutting blades, Matthew. Uh, Kermit's seen both the Delta and General International in the Canadian tool shop side by side. Only color was a different thing. <laughs> that happens, that happens. Um, okay, Dave, what is the minimum cut you can do without the calls leaving marks on the timber being planed? Uh, the calls are not like on a table saw. They are rounded. You can do any, you can do half a millimeter, a, a fraction of a millimeter. You're not going to get any marks from the calls. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me some, give me some thumbs up. I'm trying to give you guys content here to watch um, and to get a bit of an idea if you want things, if you don't like, this is not sales pitch. This is just showing you what I've got asked by Derek. How do you get past Snipe? So I'm showing Snipe and I'm showing the machine I've just done a review on. Okay. Uh, Okay, Ron Polk, CNC. Dave, have you gone to the dark side? Ron, yes. No, no, I've gone. No, I've, I'm enjoying myself. Look what it does, Ron. Man, oh man, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So easy to do. I didn't cut this out. The machine did the whole thing. And there's more of it over there. It just went And I just went around with the chisel, got, cut the tabs and took it out and assembled it for the world's best bench, Ron. The world's best bench. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ron Polk sells the second best bench in the world. Mine is the best. <laughs> Ron, when are you coming over to Australia to visit, buddy? Okay, uh, Kermit, I think some of these nicer tools are actually patented. They could be. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Okay, so that's the pine. I'm gonna throw some jarrow through it. Now this 
is a chunk of West Australian jarrah, and I've used this same piece to demonstrate things all the time. And it has snipe on the end. See the snipe? From my previous machine. Okay, 59-137. I'm gonna undo the headlock. This is a little bit khaki handed for me, but we'll get there. Too much. Now for big pieces like this, what I do is I'll set the machine up a little higher than, it, than actually touching. You never know with a piece, especially with a big chunk of hardwood, you never know if you've got some undulations or maybe it's going to get thicker. It might be a bit of a wedge shape and you have no idea. As you're pushing the timber through, you might find, or as the timber's going through the machine because it's pulled through, you don't have to push, you might find that it starts to get thicker and you're taking a whole lot more off and the machine's going to start really laboring. So the way that I try and avoid that is I'll set it a little higher push it through and then I'll come back and I'll drop it down half a millimeter at a time. This width, and this is a good, uh, this is good nearly 300 millimeters wide. I'll tell you exactly what it is. This is 285 millimeters. That's, that's uh, 45 millimeters less than the machine's absolute maximum width that it can take. So this is a fair whack and Jarra is a very, very hard timber. Get my glass, my Earmuffs. And pop it up here. All right. Lock the head. That's the other great thing about this. And we'll see how we go. Notice I forgot to turn the dust extractor on as it was going through. I love this machine. I love it. Have a look at this. Dave, I want to build my wife and I, a cabin in your backyard. Yes, I do, Ron. Not a problem. Just bring the tri camper down and you can park in the backyard. Have a look at this. Can you see any snipe? Can you see anything at all as to why you wouldn't want that machine? <laughs> you know, I, I keep telling people I get things because I like them. I don't get things because I have to. I, I, I pick and choose. I'm very bloody fussy. And this, my friends, is one of the best planar thicknesses out there. That, if that pass hasn't convinced you of how bloody good this is, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. Okay, that's enough on this. Next thing I'm going to do is swing around to the Stanton bench. Um, and uh, Ron, Ron wants to come and live at my place. From, from uh, Hawaii. Well, what time is it over there, Ron? <sighs> Unplug that. Undo that. There for the moment, and then wheel her away. I got to make another stand for this. What do you reckon? How good is that? Just lives up there in the corner. All right, next thing stand and bench. Hasn't that come up well? Yep, this way. It did the whole lot. One tool change to go from the half inch cutter. I did it with a half inch cutter this time. And then I set it to one and a half millimeters chamfer. 
with a V-bit. I just did the whole thing. It's got a little tool area here, like for pencils and screws so they don't roll away. The cushion strip finishes inside there. You just cut it off and goes through there. There's four rows of cushion strip I've put in here now. Absolutely love it. Now, before I do that, I'm going to quickly read. I'm all over the place, aren't I? I'm going to quickly read and Hell of a collaborative video, Ron building a house to Aussie regulations in Dave's backyard. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Um, it's become a bit of a passion, these tiny homes. I see April's doing something like that at the moment as well. Good honor. She's probably run out, <laughs> run out of things to talk about. Hasn't she got a massive building? All right, let's have a look here. Uh, how long did the CNC take as a matter of interest? Okay, so those three panels, quickly. Uh, this, this is another part of the panel. This is part we're gonna be fixing on today. The whole thing took 40 minutes. So it's all of it, and I kicked the speed up again. I've increased the speed by 33% for the next one I do. And I've got another one sitting on there waiting to go. I didn't want to run that today because I thought I only have a limited, limited amount of ampage coming over to this building from the main supply. This was kind of an afterthought. It's piggybacked onto the other building in the backyard. So I didn't want to be running the CNC and the computer and the dust extractor out there and the dust extractor in here and that three horse thickness are at the same time. I thought I might trip some breakers, too much draw. Okay. Um, okay. I'm reading, reading, reading. Can I please order a Stanton bench, please? Chris, of course you can. Not a problem at all. Um, in Australia, I will start to produce these myself. And I'm also talking to John Lafferty about doing a kit to go with them. Let me see if I can find something down here. It'll be something along the lines of this kit that we were giving away. And uh, so we're looking at an accessory kit to go with it. And I'm gonna do them in different styles. I'm gonna do them as a flat slab. So it just goes on its legs or we're going to do it as with the front apron, whatever you need. I'm, I should be able to do it. Now I'm going to either supply it in MDF or marine ply or maybe something. around. It's got to be around about a minimum of 18 millimeters for all the dogs to work. So I want it to be able to work with TSO's dogs. I want it to work with Peter Parfitt's dogs. I want it to work with John uh, from Yellow Box Shed. I want it to work with his dogs as well. So I'm trying to cover all bases for you guys. So you've got plenty to choose from. Now, where are we? Now, here we go. Erdem. Erdem uh, has uh, sent some stuff into me. And let me have a quick read here. Uh, here we go. Hi, Dave. I watched the, your most recent show where you used the CNC machine. I must say I loved watching your reactions to how well the machining turned out. Uh, I thought I'd share a mini project of mine where I utilize my X-Carve. It's a human bed scale down for a cat called uh, or named Zaytin, which means olive in Turkish, pronounced Zaytin, T-E-E-N. This was built out of recycled wood from the slats of a bed. And let me see if I can get this running. Here we go. Uh, that was left on the curb. I'm attaching a walk around video and a photo with this new owner, please feel free to share during the show if you'd like to. See the little pause? How cool is that? Thank you so much for that, Erdem. Look, guys, if you've got some uh, video or, uh, or some photos, send them in to me, Dave Stanton fans at Gmail, and I'll see what I can do. I'll load them up. Uh, yes, Peter, that's correct. It's a THBX330P thicknesser. Um, Price point. I don't know yet. It's going to, for the benches, the biggest struggle I'm having is, is working out shipping the things. You know, I'm, I'm happy for people in Sydney if they want them. I can take them down to Auburn with me if, when, I, when I'm down at work and you can pick them up from me after. I don't really want it to be me in the car park selling things. It'd be me out on the street about to go home. I'll bring it with me. So that could save you transport. Um, what else? The cost of the material, obviously, 
the machine didn't cost me anything, but it's still my time to do it. And I have to buy replacement bits and I'm going to have to buy parts for that machine if they need it. So all of this I've got to take into account. Um, yeah, so I've no idea. I've no idea. Let me put it this way. A MFT3 replacement top, which is smaller than this, I think is 200 and something dollars. So I don't know, maybe that's in the ballpark. Maybe it's going to be less. Maybe it's going to 200 and I think it's 250, 270, something like that. Anyway, your thought. Yeah, you need patent and outsource just like Black and Decker. Okay, so also I'm talking to someone in the States at the moment. For people in America who want to purchase this as well, I'm chatting to a person over there that's got a CNC machine and should be able to ship it all around. Okay, shipping for the Polk bench with the US is 180 plus 40 for packaging. Yeah, it's, it's a serious cost. The reason being, they're heavy, they're four feet long, and Ron's is six feet long, so it's oversized as far as transport's concerned. Mine might be able to fit on a pallet, but, you know, if you want to pick it up from me, that's going to save you a truckload of money. But I will get all the pricing together further down the track. Not too far down, as I say, I've got to finish the video on that thing. I've got to finish doing stuff there. You know, my life's a turmoil. At least, at least I've got my health. The poor old John in the hospital there is still rolling around in agony. You know, and his wife's in a bed in another room somewhere with appendicitis. I count my blessings. All right, next one. Next one, next one. Stuart West, where are we? Um, I'm hoping I've got it here. I may not have. I may not have. No, I don't think I brought Stuart's in. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I have. Here we go. This is from Stuart West. What he said is, Hi, Dave. Hope all is well. I thought you might like to see a simple modification I've made to my Trent Air Shield. I bought a sheet of air conditioner filter material, 10 millimeters thick, and cut a small sheet to fit inside the helmet. Works extremely well as a pre-filter and extends the life of the Trent filters very noticeably. It's simply laid over the top of the innards and is trapped when the cover is closed. The attached photo shows the idea. I have another mod in progress. I'll update you on how well it works once I've had a play with it. Now, I know what the mod is and I'm not going to tell you because I don't want anyone to steal Stuart's thunder. Um, shipping is ridiculous in Australia. Yeah, now I was looking at prices from Australia Post to ship from here to Perth, which I thought was going to be the longest distance. That's right across the continent. And it was going to cost around about $90 for up to 18 kilos. Now these are going to go close to that, maybe a little bit more when they're fully packed. So, you know, see what happens. Uh, yeah, have you noticed that? Yeah, I, I told Ron about that around about a year ago that there was someone selling his benches and I just thought that was a bit, bit slack, you know, jumping on the back of someone else's hard work. Anyway, is TSO going to sell the Stanton bench in the US? TSO already sells the plans, same as they sell Ron's plans as well. Uh, pick it up uh, when we get your motorhome. Of course you can, Wayne. Uh, use Transdirect. Much cheaper. Yeah, cheaper by courier. Sometimes I can... Checking couriers, it could be around 50 or $60. Okay, next thing, next thing, next thing. Ian Carey, who is watching at the moment, has had a bit of a tragedy his place. What's he going to do? No Vegemite. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe everyone's become very, it's become very fashionable to eat Vegemite now and everyone's dragging it out of the cupboard. It's been sitting there for five years. <laughs> Back of the cupboard. There is no use by date, I think, on Vegemite. It's already used. So there we go. Uh, let me have a quick look down here. Uh, one other thing here, which is from Michael, Michael Jamison, messy drawers. Now, that's not overly messy, Michael. Come on. That, that, that's pretty neat. But I do own that yellow set of uh, screwdrivers. That's a very handy set. It's a little Stanley Black & Decker set, I think. And those needle nose pliers, I think I've got the same kind as those as well. And, of course, everyone's got a, some Allen keys. <clears throat> Looking forward to making the kits, it'd be great. Yep, uh, the guy who also advertised the pork bench, he sold could be custom made to order. Yeah, you know, that sucks. Anyway, uh, where am I, where am I, where am I? Here's the next thing. My dingo, I snapped the ram on it, pulling some stumps out the other week. So you can see on the right hand side, that's up close. So I pulled it out, 
took it up to my buddy. Uh, that's, that's how I transport it. I put a hose between the um, points and that's when it's come back. If you want to get a hydraulic ram repaired, extend it all the way out and then put another hose on to stop the oil leaking. And then, brilliant, that's how it came back. All this stuff's happening in the background. <clears throat> uh, would you produce CNC file one can buy to make your bench with their own CNC? I don't know. That one's... It's really hard for me to say yes to that one because it's uh, that's just handing over all, everything I've done and away it goes. I think I'll probably just be doing the CNC uh, files to one central location per continent and they will manufacture it and fly it out to you. Uh, just a minute, this of the show is they took my catheter. Your spelling's not too good. John, come on, get with the act. None of these bloody excuses about being sick. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? What do we got next? Let's, uh, let's do this bench. Now, what I'm going to do is there's a couple of things that we can do to this. I'll move this out of the way. You know, it's, it's very accurate. I'm going to now fix this to this. So this is the apron. So that will go on somewhere there like that. Now it's got to be the right position because otherwise I'm going to be in trouble and it won't keep passing on. These holes are all done in such a manner that they line it up perfectly on the top here. You notice there's some other holes here. You may not see them from there. Now I've got to make sure that I do it right. Otherwise it's going to end in tears. Wrong. Right. Okay. So that's that way. And actually it's got to go that way. Correct. 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 Keep thinking, David, because you're around back to front. It's going on the underside. How often does that happen to you? Okay. So there. That way, that way, that way. Perfect. So I'll bring it around and you can see I made a mistake on this one too. You'll notice that you can't see through all the holes. There's only a few you can see through. I forgot, I forgot, <laughs> forgot to put all the holes in this one. There should be holes all the way along there so that you can put clamps through and stuff. So that's got to go on that way. I'm going to sit it there so I don't forget. And now spin around this way. And we're going to get some glue. And this is going to go on to there. All right. So we need to drill some holes first. And I'll use a two and a half millimeter drill. And these aren't going to stay there. These. Notice how I put my drills in my drill holder. I put them that way up so I don't cut my hand as I'm taking out. So I want two and a half, which is that guy there. In the drill, bring some drills over here. Okay, this one. Beautiful. I'm going to drill some holes through here where the cushion strip is going to go. And I'm going to use Craig screws. I don't want to countersink this. I'm just going to use the screws to hold it steady. When it's all dry, I'll take the screws out one by one, drill a quarter inch hole, and I'm going to put quarter inch down in there and then plane it. And you will not see the join. So you don't need to get a domino machine if you haven't got one. So let's drill some holes. One, two, three, four, nearly finished. Okay, that's all the holes drilled. I'm 
make sure that those little bits are gone on the back, the, the tear up behind the drill, because they will hold the joint open while I'm gluing. Beautiful. All right. Now I'm going to put some glue on this. I use, uh, I'm going to use the strongest glue that I've got, which is quick drying. I probably should get a proper glue applicator, but this does the job all right. I also use this one, this type of glue, because it gives me the longest open time as far as uh, these are concerned. It gives me about nine minutes, where the original, which is the type on number one, only gives me about five minutes. So the advantage is this one is waterproof, stronger and longer open time. So it's a bit of a no-brainer for me. I'm going to try, I've got five minutes left, I'm going to try and get it finished and also, also, also get some of the inserts in, in the base, which I thought you might like. Put this over here on the sink. All right. Now this is only going to be on the top for a short time. I'll pop that up there. Pull it together. And I'll use one of my clamps. Love it, love it, love it. And the other end. These are a great little clamp. I love them. Okay. So now, I've got it held either end. I've lined, I've lined the ends up so they're perfect. I'm not stuck to the, to the top anymore, but I'm going to leave it on there. And I'm going to put some Craig screws in. As I said, I'm going to use an inch and a half. And you know what? I might even go deeper with the drill hole. The reason being, MDF tends to separate with screws. So I'll pull this back a little. And the reason I'm using a two and a half millimeter is that it's going to be fine as a pilot hole. But it will also do, pardon me, itchy nose. It's going to be fine as far as clearance is concerned. Beautiful. It's going to be boring for you guys because you're not seeing the screws going in. <laughs> I can't see the screws. I can't see the screws. <laughs> All right. I'll spin it around. I don't need the clamps there anymore because the screws are keeping the location for me. Oh, drag it back this way. Okay, you can see it now. That guy there, this one. Release that. This is the part you'd have to do yourself because obviously you don't want the thickness of a product when you're shipping it. You want to keep it as flat as possible. Release that. Move it out a little further. Tighten back up again.
Okay, clamp off. There we go. Now I'll clean that, but you can see that the screws are where the cushion strip is going to go. So when this is dry, I'll undo those screws, I'll drill a hole down the middle for a quarter inch dowel to go in, and then give it a quick shave, and then the cushion strip will go over the top of it. This one here is the rebate for the T-Track. Okay, so I'm gonna sit that to the side. It's gonna live there. And we're gonna put the brass inserts in. Now these things here are the brass insert nuts. Now they're a knife edge. Up there. Good. All right, now hopefully, I've, I haven't tried this, so hopefully they're the right diameter that I made the holes. I can't see why it wouldn't be. And I'm, I'm using a small socket. I put a bolt down the inside of the brass insert. See, there's the bolt with a washer, and that's how I drive them in, nice and straight. It uh, doesn't matter which side it goes in. Let's see how we go. Maybe it does. Let's go to the other side. <laughs> Here we go. Done. Take it out now. Nope. Oh, that's no fun. I'll tell you what, that's not so bad because I can put another one in straight where it was. Actually, that's gone in really tight. That's the first time that's happened to me. Um, kind of caught there, aren't I? I'll take that off, holding on to it by the multis. Or a pair of pliers will do. Whoop. Now these things are horribly sharp, so don't hold on to them. There she goes. Now it should be able to go back in again. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Who said I couldn't do it? I'll do the one and I'll show you what I mean. So it's in just here. I'll bring it in closer. I'm trying to see it on the screen. Yes, there it is. And then one of the great things about this bench is you can have the cushion strips on one side and you can flip her over upside down if you don't want to use the cushion strips and you can screw the legs in without a problem. I've got a leg here. Now you can either use these guys, these are just bench cookies and a riser or John makes them as well and they go in like so. That's the leg. There you go. And now you have clearance for your clamps to go straight down through the top like any conventional dog hold table. Works brilliantly. All right, what do you think? Do you like it? Okay. I think I've got through everything. I'm five minutes over again. Always happens, always happens that I think I've got, I've got nothing for the show. <laughs> you can't shut me up. Okay, I'm gonna have a quick read. Can't see the screws, thank you. Okay, Darren, I think marine ply is best, a bit more expensive, but MDF will expand more over time, even with humidity. Uh, yes, but MDF is a nice sacrificial top as well. So as I say, you can flip it over. If you want to, you can wax it like I have with the other ones. Um, it's too late for at night for me to watch the whole thing. I'll watch tomorrow. Thanks, Ron, see you later. Um, Chris Sullivan, Dave, I love the Ron Polk bench with a Stanton top. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the joys of live telecast. Dave, Lucy, can you see use an Allen key to drive them so they don't get uh, the bolt locked in? Look, there's probably a couple of other ways that we can do it. There is a screw head. There is a special driver that people sell to put those in. It's like a, a bolt with a hole down the center and it's got two flats and it just drives it and pulls it out easy. Um, 
very nice and built, but you have to take your time. I bought Ron's plans and also King's Fund. We're working bench plans. I'm going to build both plans together. In good show. Thanks, Dave, from Ian. See all the boys and girls played nicely together again. Lost wits. I find it annoying that I have to be 516th for the bench dogs and rises. Emma, eight is much easier. Correct. Steve, how are you doing, John? John's not going great. Sue B, love it. I want the bamboo bench. Okay, I haven't got any bamboo. Um, Derek, great show, Dave. John and I enjoying from his hospital. Yeah, did you know that Derek's gone in to hold John's hand today at the hospital? Oh, that's so nice. I mentioned this to Vicky last night. And I said, what a great community we've got here. Also, if you want to jump in, look in the links below, below this in the description box, and you will find there's a link to the Dave Stanton live stream Facebook page. And that's where a whole lot more information goes from all the viewers. And they throw up pictures of their workshops. And it's just a great little society. So uh, it's, I do, I am very hard on who I let in and who I don't let in. Uh, I keep it as a little secret society, but uh, apply by all means, and you'll have to answer a couple of questions to get in the door. And that will let me know that you have been watching. Uh, another great show. Thank you. Uh, John does an M eight foot. Yes. Thanks for the show. Mark, Daryl, well done, Derek. Uh, Bernie Rathmus. Thanks, Dave, again. Okay, guys, look after yourselves. I got the date right this week. Um, I'm leaning over and looking like a, you know, one of those fantastic athletes. <laughs> the skinny body and the big wide shoulders, that's not me. All right, thanks again. Look after yourselves, be kind to each other, and I shall see you next week. And I'm going to try and get that video out on that benchtop thicknesser. And uh, that's about it. See you later.